It's Street Talk. I'm Loretta Rose. We're on location in Phoenix City at Russell County Courthouse. Today, we are going one-on-one -on -one with Judge Zach Collins. And the purpose of today's show is to share with the community more about the various entities involved in family court and juvenile court. Stick around. You're watching here on Bean TV. Welcome back. It's Street Talk. I'm Loretta Rose, and we're on location in Phoenix City at the Russell County Courthouse. And we are with the Honorable Judge Zach Collins, Sr. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate wow. it. Wow. We are super, super proud of you, first of all. Well, thanks. And your service. Yes. Your contribution. Yeah. Glad to be of service. Well, I'm going to tell you right off the back. I am here because of talking to some people in the community, and we were talking about family court, okay, yeah. and someone was talking about the various entities that involves family court, and they were talking about you, okay. <laughs> and we're going to get into it a little later, and they were talking about drug court, sure. and I said, I did not know we had all of those resources here oh, yeah. in our community. Oh, yeah. And I was recommended to reach out and interview you. All right, well, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> so that's why we're here, and thank you all for joining us. But for those of you that don't really know Judge Zach Collins, I want to help you to understand a little bit more about the man behind the title judge. He is a native of Columbus that's right. in the Bi City area, that's right. grew up on South Side. Columbus, right. graduated early from high school, formerly known as Baker High School, That's right. That's right. graduated at the age of 17, yes. had an opportunity to go to college because you had a promising um, career path for sports. Because right. Absolutely, but he chose to go into the military. You served in the United States Air Force. That's right. Wow, you could have went in so many directions, but you chose to go and serve. Yes. I well, love it. Well, uh, you know, as a young man, I, you know, I, um, I became a father at, at 17, and um, and I was also an athlete. And rather than uh, dump that responsibility off on my on my mom, and she was a single mom at that time, uh, I forewent the opportunities that I had to play college football to go into the Air Force. So I graduated. I was actually a student at Baker. I was going to Baker doing my 11th grade uh, work in the day, daytime, and then I was going to Halle Turner at night wow. doing my 12th grade work so I could graduate early to go in the Air Force to take care of my wife and my, my daughter because I got married at 17 as well. Wow. And so I went into the Air Force um, and, uh, you know, wanted to take care of, of, of my responsibilities, you know as a young man and so yeah that is very commendable for you at a young man and it's obvious you had a plan because you chose to not only go to school during the day you went to school Hallie Turner as sure. well and you had a plan I love that and I hope young people are listening because he's going to share a lot of wisdom and be transparent with his own story yeah, so to be transparent, I don't know if I had a plan. <laughs> oh, it it, it appears that way. Well, what I can say is is that I grew up without a dad, right? And so uh, I didn't, because of my experience with, with without having my, my biological father in my life, I didn't want my daughter at the time mm -hmm. to, to have that same experience. Wow. And so for me, it was based on my learned experience that I wanted to do something better for, for my, my child. And so that's why I went in the Air Force. Wow. Um, and because, of course, you know, being an athlete, you know, once an athlete, always an athlete. When I got out of the Air Force, I did about four years. And when I got out of the Air Force, um, I went to music school and, and, and did some uh, entertainment uh, uh, 
stuff. But at, at some point, I, I decided to, to go back and play ball. So I walked on at Auburn, War Eagle. <laughs> um, and um, I, wasn't at, I, I didn't make the uh, team, make the practice squad. Um, and I ultimately broke my leg playing for the Columbus Stars here. Uh, and I couldn't, couldn't go back and finish my college career because I had a, a career-ending injury um, playing, playing ball here. But I, I, I always wanted to play football. I always wanted to try to make it to the pros. And, I mean, I guess walking on was as close as I could get. <laughs> um, and then I decided uh, through more life experience that I wanted to go to law school wow. and uh, become an attorney. I love the fact. And again, I'll say, with your success, you've had plans. Okay. You always, because you never quit. That's right. And, and as we continue throughout our interview, people are going to see, wow, how innovative you are. Because you have a lot of knowledge. Um, you're in the entertainment industry. Um, you are a writer at heart. Yes. Um, very intelligent and has always been driven, self-motivating. That's what I love about you. Yes. You've been this very self-motivating. Now, with your life, living, going through what you went through, living on South Side, which has, I believe, helped shape and mold who was, you are. I, I would have traded that experience. Exactly, anything, exactly. Yes. And, and you're helping so many other young people. But what was life like for you? as a young male teenager, trying to navigate your way through this thing called life and then becoming a parent yeah. at such a young age and then becoming a, a husband. Yeah. Um, that, that was a lot yeah, at well, one time. Well, it was, it was tough because my mom, you know, she worked, she worked two, three, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, four jobs because she wanted to, you know, provide for us. So she was doing the best she could, which also meant though she was she was not home a lot. You know what I mean? So we we in a sense, my brother and I, we in a sense, uh, we kinda of raised ourselves for the most part. You know, not not from a negative standpoint. Mm -hmm. We were never in in um, in false care or nothing like that. My mom was a great mom and, and I'll share some some of that with you. Uh, even when I got old, she was still sacrificing because that, that was her mind frame. I'm going to sacrifice my kids. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not having a, a, a dad at home, it, it kind of left us to kind of learn a lot on our own. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it was tough. You know, you do the best you can. Um, and a, a lot of the role models I leaned on were my coaches. Um, the, the coaches uh, became father figures and big brothers for me um, coming up. And mm -hmm. so... Um, you know, made a lot of mistakes, wow. you know, um, but what you do is you pick up, you recover, you get up, and you uh, you fight again, so right. that's, and that's, that's why I'm here, you know. And you've, you've had a lot of coaches and mentors in your life, and that's what you are. Yeah. You are that in the courtroom. Yes, yes, that's you, what I try to be, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want the community to understand and help us them to understand, when did you find the passion for law, family law, because it's at the core of who you are. Well, I've always been a, a, an artsy kind of guy, um, but knowledge and, and, and learning it, it has also been at the core of me. I, I was telling my son the other day, I remember when um, the guys would come around and try to sell the Encyclopedia Britannica. I remember door. those days. And I always wanted, I mean, I told my mom, Please buy me an encyclopedia set, and I would get this, and I would literally read the encyclopedia because I just had this thirst for knowledge. But I was also a creative, and I was also an athlete, and um, never really good at science and math. But um, when I when I got to a certain point as an adult, um, and I got into a custody battle, that's when I when I I realized I wanted to be a lawyer um, because. Um, of the experience I had with the courts as a as a as a father, I, I just felt like the system was 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 not set up mm -hmm. in favor of fathers, and so I, I wanted to become an attorney, and my goal was to become a family court judge so that I could affect some type of change, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try to do every day is is make sure the playing field is level mm -hmm. for both mom and dad coming into the court. Wow, I think it's important. And, and, it's, and I appreciate you sharing your unique experience 
and you are serving so many others and blessing so many others because you understand what it feels like to be on this side. I understand what it feels like to be on the stand. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell a lot of folks when they come in and they have this, uh, sometimes because you have folks come in that, that have this perception that, um, that the court does not understand what's going on. And I sit in a unique position because I don't know very many judges who have gone through what I've gone through to be able to hear these kind of cases, you know, mm -hmm. divorce, custody. You know, when I've, I've actually had to sit on the stand and testify about getting custody of my, of my kids. Wow. And so when, you, when you're sitting there, you know what it's like when someone else is sitting there, how they feel, the anxiety. Yeah. And one of the things I pride myself on is whenever I um, make a decision in the case, I'm very decisive. Like I don't sit and just ponder and wait and try to, you know, I make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, because those parents and those, those families, they need to know and I try to let them know before they leave the courtroom, here's how this case is probably going to happen. Sometimes I make a ruling from the bench and then I write it down and memorialize it. But I try to let them know, this is what you're looking at. So they can have time to adjust their situation rather than waiting three, six, nine months to get a decision only to now have to change. So I think it's important to know what the parties have gone through in order to make a decision in their lives. Wow. Yeah. And the empathy is appreciated. Yeah. I will say on behalf of families, you've seen a lot to come through. I'm pretty sure more than you bargained for. And I can only imagine what it may be like when you have to go home sometime, you know, and think about how a day has been. Um, serving in family law in juvenile, help the community to understand here the various entities that is pertaining to family law in juvenile because it's more than I think we realize here in the community. So I'm over uh, the family court, uh, which encompasses uh, cases such as divorce, uh, contested and uncontested, uh, contested meaning that the parties can't agree um, and uh, they, they want to have their day in court to have the judge make a decision. Um, and then there's uncontested, meaning they just file paperwork saying, hey, we no longer want to be together, and, and they go their separate ways. Uh, also custody issues, which are sometimes inside divorce cases. Sometimes custody cases are just filed between unmarried parties, and uh, so I hear those kinds of cases. Uh, I, and, the ju on the, and also on the domestic relations side or the family court side, I hear protection from abuse cases, which is the, uh, domestic violence cases. Um, and so I enter protection orders and I try to protect uh, mostly uh, uh, mothers and, and females from um, abusers. There are occasions, and I do see a, a lot of cases, where females are aggressors and males are getting protection orders from, from females. And what I'm seeing that a lot lately, actually. Um, and uh, on the uh, juvenile court side, I hear child abuse and neglect cases, so cases where DHR gets involved, where a parent is abusing or neglecting a child, uh, as well as cases where um, children are not going to school. Uh, that's on uh, the truancy side. True. On my delinquency side, children who get into trouble. Um, mm -hmm. we, we hear those cases. Um, and for the most part, that's what I do. I also oversee the family uh, in juvenile drug courts. Uh, and wow. so that, that has been uh, something that we've really taken over and we've gotten a lot of folks a lot of help. Uh, when I first took over that court, there was a lot of resistance from the parents. Uh, you know, they have a drug problem, they come into court, and the last thing they want to do is get sent off to a treatment facility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of them go kicking and screaming and calling me all kinds of names and saying mm -hmm. I don't care and all this kind of stuff. I can't tell you how many times when they come back from treatment, mm -hmm. you know, they thank me okay, thank you. Absolutely. for sending them away. Absolutely. You know, and so, um, and when you see people get help like that, mm -hmm. and when you see children get returned back to their parents, you know, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a joy 
to do this job. I, my court, all folks say it all the time, you know, I don't see how you do that. Uh-huh. You know? Wow. Yeah. And so. Um, and that's intervention, you know. Yeah. And so help. I want to help the community to understand. In a case like that, because it may be someone watching, have family members wanting to get them help. Yeah. What is the first step? Well, if if someone has a substance abuse problem, if they if they're using drugs, um, and it's affecting their ability to parent, um, they should you know contact. Uh, one number one, they can just contact the courts directly by um, reaching out to my probation office, saying, hey. My grandchildren are with a parent. Um, Mom and dad is not taking care of them. And then we'll try to see about getting an emergency hearing uh, set up, get the kids to a safe situation, and then get the parents into drug court. All right? That's one way. They can just also just call the family drug court, Mr. Tommy Powell, my drug court coordinator, and, and see if the parents want to just enroll in drug court. Most parents don't want to just enroll in drug court. Mm-hmm. That's usually the step that most folks don't take mm-hmm. because it's a disruption in their lives and uh, quite often they're in the, the fog of drug use they can't think clearly and that's the last thing so um, a lot of times most most folks are somewhat forced to, to, to get into drug court um, but they can just simply make a call to the uh, probation office mm-hmm. juvenile probation office or the, the drug court coordinator and uh, we can get set up. Another resort is to contact DHR. And a lot of folks don't like to contact DHR because once DHR, you know, gets in your business, they're in your business mm-hmm. now. And you know, but my approach, and and some people see that as negative. I, I don't because first and foremost, we have to protect the children. Mm-hmm. You know, and I tell folks that my my first job is not about the parents. Not it's about protecting the, the children. children. Once we get them protected. Then, you know, that's when, you know, the, the I guess the element of, of fairness kicks in Absolutely. for me. Because, you, you know, if the children are not protected, Absolutely. it doesn't really matter. Absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely. And so DHR is also an option. Yeah. Um, and I would encourage folks to, to uh, contact DHR if they suspect a child yeah. is being abused or neglected. And in some situations, people have a legal obligation to do that if they're mand- mandatory reporters. So. I, I'm glad you expound on that because I don't think the community, unless you've been here, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't understand all that this entails. And I love the fact that you're helping the community to understand um, that, you know, we have to, somebody got to advocate and be that voice for those children right. and for those families. That's right. And that's what's happening here. That's right. And it's good to know that we have those resources here. And the reason I want it you to share that is because I've heard so many people on the street with doing street talk Mm -hmm. saying that they have to go to Columbus to get help but we have something here for our residents over here we do and you know and there's some there's some legitimacy to to that Uh, one Columbus is bigger than Phoenix City right Uh, two if people live in Phoenix excuse me in Columbus um, then certain agencies may not be able to service them mm-hmm. because they may not have uh, in, uh, uh, private insurance. Right. So they have Medicaid uh, in Columbus or you know, whatever it's called over there. Um, they have to go to a Columbus provider. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. Primarily is they have more resources. Right. But we do have resources here. We don't have enough resources, but no one in the state has enough resources Absolutely. for the problems that we have. So I always tell folks when we have our team meetings, we're just doing the best we can. Mm-hmm. We just gotta, you know, put forth the best effort we can. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we do have, and, and one of the things that we we do have here is I'm also the chairman um, of what's called the Children's Policy Council, the CPC, um, and that's an organization uh, that's set up by statute where the juvenile court judge has to meet with all uh, local agencies that want to participate to do outreach to the community. Now, all, all counties don't have an active CPC. We have a very active CPC. We meet uh, usually once a month. Um, we're in the process of becoming a 501c3 so we can get funding. Um, we work closely with DHR and all of our other agencies, East Alabama Mental Health. Um, we work, we have hospice come in. Um, 
we we partner with any agency mm -hmm. that supports families, um, Head Start. And so we have a meeting with all these different uh, service providers. And we get together and we talk and we fellowship about well, what's going on in the community. What do you need? What do you need? How can we help each other? And, um, and so that's something that we do as well. And in our family court waiting room, uh, we have a board with all of those resources up there. So anybody can come up and um, just see what resources we have available. And if they just call my court mm -hmm. and ask to speak to my uh, judicial assistant, Ms. Uh, Linda Elias, uh, we'll, we'll find some resources. We'll awesome. find ways to help. I love it. Yeah. And you are so involved in the community. Yes. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and we appreciate you for that as well. Before we get ready to take a break, I want to to congratulate you again on, I guess it's been five years, four or five years? It's been five years already. I can't believe it. Because yeah. the last time we sat down and had an interview yeah. was when <laughs> you were sworn in. That's right. That's right. And you have a, accomplished so many things yes, within that amount of time. We've been working. Well, yeah. I, was, I was elected to serve, and that's what we're doing. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about some more of the achievements um, that has been taking place here at Russell County Courthouse and with Family Court and Juvenile Court as well. You're watching here on Beam TV. What is Magnify? Magnify spreads Wi-Fi across your entire home. Pods plug straight into the wall. No messy cables. They spread the Internet from your existing modem to every corner of your home at full speed. Magnify doesn't just make your Wi-Fi faster, it intelligently adapts to your environment and manages your Wi-Fi 24-7 based on insights, like the number and types of devices you have connected. Magnify, worry-free Wi-Fi, brought to you by Beam. Welcome back. We are here at Russell County Courthouse with the Honorable Judge Zach Collins Sr. And we appreciate him for sharing about all the various services and entities pertaining to family law and juvenile law here at the courthouse. And thank you again for your time. Absolutely. My pleasure. I want to talk about some of your achievements um, you all have accomplished here. Mm -hmm. I love established grand families day in yes. 2019. Tell us about that. That's one of my highlights. Um, I, uh, I'm part of the, uh, the state child welfare reform team. Like So I, I've gone from um, Washington, D.C. to Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, with the uh, with state DHR and the uh, AOC Administrative Office of Courts as part of uh, a team to help improve the child welfare system in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, whenever I have families uh, that come before me, you know, I always try to, to, to thank both foster parents mm -hmm. and um, grandparents, cousins, uncles, um, aunts, that step up to take care of children that are in foster care or their parents are suffering uh, some type of uh, substance abuse or, or mental health issue. Because, as you know, I mean, raising your own kids is hard, but when you're raising somebody else's child, yeah. it's even harder. Right. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, I like to think we'd all do if, uh, if, if we were put in that situation, but it doesn't make the job easy. Absolutely. So, um, with my uh, Children's Policy Council, I sought out to try to uh, acknowledge and, and show appreciation to those folks who step up when they don't have to. And those are the grand families, yeah. right? I That's what we it. call them, grand families. So we set out and we said, hey, let's do a Grand Families Day. Uh, and we did it uh, back in 2019, August 5th. Um, and um, we did it at Central Activities Center. So we brought uh, all of our entities together, agencies, and said, hey, let's just, you know, have free food, um, giveaways, you know, book bags. It was wow. before school to all the grandparents that are taking care of, uh, of these children and grand families, I should say. 
It was a great event. I mean, it was oh, it, wow. it was bigger than we expected it to be. We want and to know the next time you do that. Well, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it in 2020 <laughs> because of COVID. Right. We couldn't do it in 2021 this year because of COVID yeah. still. But we we certainly hope to do it uh, next year yes. and get back back Beautiful. to it because it was it was it was a. And what we also uh, gave an award to three families that uh, that really stepped up, and so wow. they really really appreciate wow. that. So. And um, kudos so, to all the grandparents oh, yeah, and yeah. families that have, you know, stepped in to be a part of the village. Yes. And it, it's a blessing to see. And it's, it's nice to know that they'll be an honor yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes people just want to hear you say thank you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, when, when I tell foster parents, hey, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. That means something to them, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's important to 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 be grateful to Absolutely. folks that, that do stuff. I love that, it. Yeah. Also, I see outreach to dependent children by providing teddy bears and toys That's during court. That's I love favorite. that. If you look back behind my bench, right behind, I'm getting chills now. Just telling. If you look at my uh, back, back behind my bench, you see teddy bear back, oh. back there. Um, so. What I do is every child that comes in, when they come in this courtroom, they're gonna walk out of here with a teddy bear, or they're gonna walk out, if it's a little boy, they're gonna walk out with a, with a Hot Wheel car or something like that because they're coming, like you said, hey, I, I've never been in the courtroom. Well, these kids are coming in this courtroom and I'm having to make decisions about their lives. They don't know what's going on. I wanna do everything I can to make them comfortable. They, you know, they're they're about to be separated from a parent. They may walk in the courtroom and walk out and not go home to their parent mm -hmm. because of, because of drug use. Yeah. But what's going to happen is they're going to walk out with something. They're going to walk out with a teddy bear, mm -hmm. and you don't know how many pictures I received of those kids wow. sleeping with the teddy bears and saying the mm -hmm. judge gave me that teddy bear. It 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 is it is one of the best parts of my job is to get from that bench and give a teddy bear to a baby. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I've talked with the state about extending that initiative to all across the state to try to get other juvenile judges to, to do the same thing because I've seen the positive net effects of that. And, uh, and I've also talked with uh, the, the Sheriff's Department, Mr. Earl, uh, one, of the, one of the elder uh, deputies, wow. about mm -hmm. giving bears to the sheriffs and I want to call it bears for sheriffs. Oh my goodness. So that when they go out to a house and they have Praise a call God. they can just give a bear to a baby. You know, so and so cool. we're getting a we get a lot of bears. I mean I got bears back there in my middle room. I'll show you after after this. We got bears. Um I have a couple of attorneys that have just donated a lot of toys for Christmas because we try to give away toys to kids at DHR. Mm -hmm. We we do a lot to try to just give back to the to the kids and, and the families that, that need it because that's that's what you know wow. that's what we're supposed to do, you know? Well and, and it makes it shows because yeah. the streets are talking about it. Yeah. It but they didn't say that part. Yeah. But now I understand why someone said you need to talk interview you yeah. because you care. Yeah. It comes across yeah. the people that comes in here. Yeah. It's impacting the families. Yeah. Wow. That's what we try to do. Now, every, everybody that walks out of the courtroom ain't always happy now. That's all right. <laughs> I have cases where, you know, I have to make tough decisions. Yeah. And um, I think what I'm known for and what people tell me I'm known for is for being fair. Mm -hmm. And win, lose, or draw, you know, you're going to at least, you know, feel like you know, I was fair. Now, some people are going to feel like I'm just not fair, but those are usually the people right. that are, you know, are wrong and they right. just don't want to admit. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't want to admit they're wrong. Right. But I try to I try to be fair. Sometimes I, I can be overly, I give people too many opportunities. Yeah. I've been accused of that too. Yeah. But I'd rather err on the side of fairness mm -hmm. than on the side of um, judgment. Absolutely. You know I mean? Wow. So, yeah. I also, yeah. I was reading your bio and this part about active in the community, yes. your motivational speaker at school. That's right. I love that. I go to any school and talk to any kid. Wow. Um, I, every year I go to Career Day, Lakewood, to uh, Middle Lane. Um, uh, I brought uh, 
uh, sixth graders, fifth and sixth graders up to the courthouse to show them the courtroom and had attorneys in. So we not only outreach, we bring them in so that they can see what's going on in the um, in the courthouse because I think it's important. You know, most kids they all want to grow up to be you know football players or musicians mm -hmm. or artists or you know uh, whatever, but. Um, sometimes it's good to show them what we do in the right. law so that they can be on the right side Absolutely. of the law and not the wrong side of the law. Yes. And so, so that exposure is important. Um, and, um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll, I'll go out and speak to I love kids. it. I, last year I did, uh, I spoke to some high schoolers at Jordan High School via Zoom. You oh, know? wow. And uh, that, was, that was great, you know. So. The impact that it's making, I think it's, beyond what you can ever imagine because it, it sticks with them I mean think about how your mentors and your coaches right. what they poured into you right. yeah. and look where it has brought you to that's and that's how it is with these children that you they're the lives that you're touching by sharing with them I love the fact also created resources for juveniles and families at Russell County yeah that's uh, that's that's been good you know it, when I first got on the bench you know, no, no one really knew who I was and what mm -hmm. I was going to do. So it was, it was hard to, to get, you know, folks to give money, right? right. But uh, over the last year, year and a half, we've been able to secure some resources okay. from the county commission um, and from DYS to create alternatives to detention programs. Uh, whenever we have a child that comes before the court and they do something bad, we may have to detain them. Rather than just throwing them over in, in, in uh, Lee County in the detention center, I wanted to create some programs that before they get adjudicated or before their case actually comes to court, we can start working with those families so that you know they don't have to go to, to detention. Or if they do go to DYS when they come back, we put some things in place for when they come back and they don't have a repeat. And so we, we've just gotten um, included as part of a grant with um, uh, Lee County and uh, Barber mm -hmm. County for youth villages to come in, and they're going to be coming in and helping us provide alternatives Wonderful. to detention. Um, I have a young lady by the name of Samithia Graham. Um, she has a, a, a agency called Chosen Generations. Um, we brought her in. I met with her, and we brought her in. I think she's, she's going to be a powerful resource for us to help some of these young folks uh, pre-adjudication to get their lives on track. I so, love it. I love it. And so that's, 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 that's what we're trying to do is get those resources. We're doing a great job. I want to talk, um, at, before we start closing out, some of the issues that you, you see coming in. And before we went on air, you were sharing with me about human trafficking. Sure. And yes. I, I would love for you, if you don't mind, oh, no. expounding that we have that right here in our community. Yeah, it's um, a lot of a lot of young folks, particularly, don't believe that something like human trafficking can happen to them. And so we have a a lot of young ladies, particularly, that run away. Um, they're frustrated at home. They you know they can't get along with mom. Uh, can't get what they want. Yeah. Can't date whatever boy they want. You know all yeah. those kinds of things. And so their first uh, recourse is just to run away and so a parent may file a, uh, a chance petition a child in need a supervision petition runaway uh, petition and when I bring them before the court I try to explain to them you know listen uh, you, you're a beautiful young lady there's some bad people in this world right. and uh, they, they want to pick you up and take you uh, off of 280 to 85 and see you to Atlanta, Chicago, New York, in somebody's basement. And I keep it really real with them. I mean, I tell them exactly what could happen to them. Um, because it's real. I've had cases, I've had recent cases uh, of, of little girls being uh, kidnapped mm -hmm. and, um, and being taken and drugged and um, sexually assaulted. And, and it, it's, it's real. You know, and um, and so I try to. The key thing is to try to get resources that when these young ladies do run away, and we do pick them up, to to discourage them from running away again, because human trafficking is is a problem in this area. Uh, 
obviously it's not as big a problem as it is in other parts of the state, but it's a problem here. Yeah. And one child being kidnapped Absolutely. and abducted, abducted is one child too many for, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, yeah. Wow. So we really try to do outreach with the, with the young ladies in particular. But, I mean, you know, they'll kidnap little boys too. Right. So I try to tell these young men that, hey, you know, don't, don't be running away. That's right. And I really want families to share this with families, friends and family, because this is um, some great information, um, informative information for our community as well. You have protection orders, dom domestic violence. That's right, yeah. We, uh, again, we try to, we, you know, if, if someone is assault, assaulted, you know, you, it has to be some type of um, relationship, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, child, parent, um, will they come down to uh, to Hope Harbor, which is our agency that we partner with? They're here in the courthouse, Hope Harbor, um, and they file a uh, a protection order petition. And I immediately, you know, if the circumstances warrant, I immediately grant an emergency uh, protection order, and then I have a hearing within a certain amount of time. Wow. So we do that to try to um, try to. You know, get some distance, and, and mostly just try to protect folks from being from being harmed. Um, now we do have some folks come down and try to file these <laughs> petitions to get folks kicked out of the house, and I, you know, I can usually sift right through those. Uh, but you know, those are very serious cases, mm -hmm. uh, and we we and we act on those immediately. Yeah. Wow, you know, you have been such a blessing in this interview. I would love for you to speak from your heart to maybe single parents. Yeah. There may be a single father out there that is trying to navigate their way through life challenges and maybe on that end where you were. You know, you got to make a decision not only um, for your children but for you as well. Yeah. For those that are out there, because there's so many of them, mm -hmm. and they're trying to find their way. Yeah. And sometimes it seems like it's impossible or it's hopeless, or even with teenagers, yeah. children, yeah. you know, because, you know, everybody want to do their own thing. Yeah. But what would you say f to encourage them? Yeah, what I would say is, particularly for fathers, single fathers, um, the system is, is, is not rigged against you. It, it is not. I mean, in fact... Um, and, I, and I know most judges across the state will, will, will support me in this. Um, the courts are giving custody to fathers uh, at an unprecedented rate, more sometimes more to the fathers than to the mothers. Um, all we look at is who's going to serve the best interest of the mm -hmm. child. We, we no longer, the courts, when I say we, I mean the courts no longer just look at gender. There, there is, in fact, no presumption that the mother is the better parent. That that does not exist legally. Does not exist anymore. And so, um, if if you want custody and visitation, and I see fathers doing it all the time. You know, there used to be a time when people didn't want to get on papers when yeah. you called. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on dad's. <laughs> now they come down here and say, yeah. "Hey, I'll pay child support. Wow. I just want to see my child." Wow. You know, and. Um, and so what I want folks to know is if you walk out of the courtroom, though, and you don't have custody, it's not because the system is rigged against you. Mm -hmm. It's because the facts didn't warrant that, you know. And so, and, 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 and that's what I want to impress upon those. For, for, for my young folks, um, you know, I'm not supposed to be here, you know, mm -hmm. where I grew up. Wow. You know, um, Baker Village, you know, Southside. You know, not a lot of opportunities. Made a lot of mistakes as a young, young, young man. Made a lot of mistakes as an adult. Um, but you persevere and you continue and you work hard and you do the best you can at everything that you get involved in. Um, and you always try to do right by folks. Doesn't mean you're always going to get it right, mm -hmm. but you always try to do right. And and that's how you become a success. Um, and um, and I, you know, I just want folks to know that the courts are here, we're, we're, we're open, um, and my colleagues here on the bench, Judge Gray, Judge Bellamy, Judge Johnson, I, I tell folks this all the time, I think we have the best bench in the state. And I've been before a lot of judges and I go to a lot of conferences or whatnot, 
but I know these judges here care. Yeah. You know, again, we're not gonna always agree with you. You know, mm -hmm. we're not always gonna be nice all the time because sometimes people, you know, can, can rub us the wrong way. Right. We're human. That's right. Um, and, but I know what we always try to do is do the right thing. Right. And we always try to be fair. And but fairness is subjective depending on what side of the coin you're on. Yes, right. um, but I know I can say that our judges try to do that. You know, there's no question about it. And so the courthouse doors are always open, and we we're here to serve you. And I love that you shared that because we do have some amazing, caring leaders, judges here, serving in the community, and we feel you. I I. I I knew it was heartfelt, this interview, because it really, really blessed me. And I love the fact, when I think about your life, Judge Collins, and for other young people that are out there, and the things that they are navigating now, you changed the narrative. And you're helping them to understand that they can too. Yeah, you can. You can too. Yeah. And I hope this interview will inspire you to do that. Now, as a judge serving, you've been here for five years? Yes, ma'am. You, you've accomplished a lot in five years. And I know there's many more things that you aspire to do. That's what we're looking to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. What would you say to the people that you serve from your heart to them? Because I know you, he's so gracious and so humble, but he loved being a servant. But from, from your heart to them, and I know you have much gratitude for them, mm -hmm. I would love for you to speak from your heart to the citizens that you serve. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to serve. Um, when I came back home to, to Columbus uh, and to Russell County, because Columbus is my home, but to Phoenix City, no one really knew who I was. And I didn't have a lot of support from um, from the local uh, community for the most part in, until the election came. And I, and I had to earn your trust to, to, to be here. And, um, and I can say that I, I did not take that and I will not ever take that for granted. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve and, and, um, and uh, that, that, that's really what it's all about. It, it's just really stepping out of the uh, four corners of this building and just you know, giving back. I mean, I could sit here all day and just hear cases, you know, make decisions mm -hmm. and go home. Wow. Um, and, and I can make an impact doing that. But I can make a bigger impact, you know, leaving, you know, the courthouse, mm -hmm. get going into the community, um, finding resources, traveling across this country, trying to yeah. find ways to make this system, our system better. Um, that's that's what I see as, as as service, and so I just appreciate the opportunity to 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 do that, you know. So. And thank you for allowing us to go one on one with you. Anytime. <laughs> because I heard that you were traveling in in Washington on seminars or conferences to see how you can make you all can make things better here yes. in Russell County. And so those are the things that you all don't get to see behind the scene. So we are thankful for Judge Zach Collins for allowing us to go one-on-one -on -one with him and also expounding on the services regarding family law here in the courts and um, juvenile as well. So if you have any questions, concerns, or you want to know more about the various resources that are provided here, as Judge Zach Collins said, you can call Russell County Courthouse. We'll make sure we provide that number for you. The services is here. It is for you, and they are open to answer all of your questions and concerns. I hope today's show has been a great, informative interview with you for you. So thanks for watching. You've been watching here on Beam TV.